We are talking trivia about episode number 10, Fallen Angel. The Cheyenne Mountain Complex is a real place. They dug out nearly 700,000 tons of granite to build the facility, which was completed in 1967. It is a part of NORAD, that is the North American Aerospace Defense Command. You move on or cue close? Uh, do you mind if I sit down? Max lists his own set of acronyms. First, MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. Founded in 1969 with the idea of having mostly amateur volunteers investigate UFO sightings and encounters. It still exists today. Although the founding intent was a wholly scientific study of UFO phenomenon, the organization has adopted many pseudo-scientific methods. Unfortunately, uh, quite a few members now fall into the category of crank or wild conspiracy theorist. KUFOS, Center for UFO Studies, founded in 1973 by J. Allen Hynek of Project Blue Book fame. He also created the Close Encounter Scale. KUFOS still exists and is primarily concerned with keeping a database of UFO sightings and analyzing new reports as they happen. Coincidentally, Alan Hynek's son, Joel, was the special effects director for the film, Predator. Max himself is a member of NICAP, National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon. It ceased to exist around 1980, and its archives were absorbed by KUFOS. NICAP did have a famous board member, one Roscoe Hillenketter, the first director of the Central Intelligence Agency. Here is a glimpse of the invisible alien footage before post-production imaging. Terrifying. Because it wasn't. What you saw was not a toxic spill. But it wasn't a UFO either. Okay, I'm all ears. What was it? It was a downed Libyan jet with a nuclear warhead. <laughs> now, at Libya's greatest technical capacity, it could manage an armed aviation range of optimistically 1,500 miles. And despite what you might remember from Back to the Future, the Libyan government never passed the initial stages of a true nuclear weapons program. However, in 1961, a U.S. Air Force Boeing B-52 broke up mid-flight and dropped two Mark 39 nuclear bombs on North Carolina. Fortunately, neither detonated. The safeguards built into the weapons prevented the accident from becoming a true catastrophe. So, Mulder had his sidearm confiscated by the MPs. Yet again, Scully pulls her pistol. 10 for 10. Although, she appears to have the slide locked open here. How did you recognize me? Well, I, uh, I saw your picture in a trade publication once, and uh, of course I read your article in Omni about the Gulf Breeze sightings. I published that under a pseudonym. Yeah. Omni Magazine holds a special place in my heart. It ran from 1978 to 1997. It was devoted to science in the future, science fiction, and included a good deal of paranormal content. They also published short stories and excerpts. Some famous titles are George R. R. Martin's Sand Kings, William Gibson's Burning Chrome and Johnny Mnemonic, Joyce Carol Oates' Thanksgiving, and other works by Ray Bradbury, Asimov, and Burroughs. I'm not aware of them writing about the Gulf Breeze sightings, however. So speaking of Gulf Breeze, they made it onto Unsolved Mysteries. The short description is there are some late 80s photos taken in Florida, most likely perpetrated as a hoax by a man named Ed Walters, who built a model and then photographed with double exposures to complicate the images. Max's trailer, much like Mulder's office, was decorated by Liz Goldwyn and Chris Parker, who are responsible for the show's set dressing. I think they did a really nice job here. This great, almost ethereal abduction of Max was done entirely with practical effects. This is lighting and gel, and he's hoisted up with piano wire. Well done. That's it.
That's Fallen Angel Trivia. Next up is number 11, Eve. Somebody's always paying attention, Mr. Mulder.